that day, back in 2009, I was actually on the wreck that day. I was on the dive, but I'd finished my dive a lot sooner than Carl. I saw the support diver come down, I saw something was going on, I went down, I offloaded cylinders to Carl, uh, my emergency bailout cylinders as well, and I came up, and not for one second did it cross my mind that we'd lost him. And um, it came in as a phone call. Uh, I was in the water, I was doing my decompression, and basically I got a note passed to me. I just acted like a machine and I managed to bring Carl to the back of the rib. So I immediately put a phone call into Lee's mobile, which just kind of stopped everything, really. And you had lost a friend. A good friend. said that, um, uh, how do you know about it? And I said, it's, it's on the BBC News. It's still difficult to talk about it now. Yeah. I first met Carl back in, uh, just after 1998. I'd been to Britannic with the Starfish Enterprise. I think we first met at a dive show somewhere. And just introducing himself to people in a very sort of, uh, what's the best word for it? He always was very, very self-deprecating. He came to me and said he wanted to dive Britannic. I did a talk in Birmingham and Carl came up to, to us at the show afterwards and he was one of the only people that came up and he said that was fantastic, a brilliant presentation, thank you very much. I'd love to dive Britannic. He came in as a, as a very enthusiastic rebreather diver wanting to uh, learn how to use rebreathers and trimix and all that good stuff. He didn't seem to be anybody special at that particular time. At the time, I didn't know who he was, uh, what he did, what his experience was. Uh, and um, a little while later, of course, uh, things developed and uh, he, he, he became more, better known to us. Humble, sort of, you know, self-effacing sort of way, this guy who sort of took the mickey out of himself as much as he possibly could, whilst hiding the fact that he was actually an accomplished guy. Personally, the impact to me um, has been, I haven't really done much project-wise. I haven't dived deep for a long, long time now since, since the, uh, the incident and it's took me a while to get myself back in the water realistically. Um, most outstanding memory, Carl. I just, you know, there are so many. When we went to Titanic, <coughs> and there was Kevin Gurr, myself and Carl. We were obviously thrown together in a small metal sphere for, I think, 12 hours in the end. I can't remember, something like that. And that night, we all kind of introduced ourselves in the boardroom there. You can't stand up, you can't lay down particularly well. It's not like you're stuck there with someone though. It, the whole experience is so overwhelming, really. And then um, Carl stood up and uh, he said, uh, yeah, Carl spent a, a plumber from Canada. Probably the competition to fill the pee bowls up in the Mir submarine, I guess. And everyone kind of looked around and went, all right. You know, there was a big thing about oh, when you're in the mirrors, you know, a real submariner doesn't take a pee for 12 hours and all this kind of stuff. Okay. And Kev Gert stood up and he said, Kev Gert, scuba instructor. So Carl and I decided we'd fill every single bottle in the, in the mirror just for a laugh. And I went, yeah, Lee Bishop, firefighter. And walk out with them all, which we did. He was a plumber that seriously did do some very serious dive. And that was it. And everyone kind of looked at us and they say, what are you doing here? You're nothing. 
his smile probably is one of the things that I prefer to keep. That's probably one of the most important memory of Carl. I will always remember just the, the look of excitement and enjoyment that always seemed to be on his face every time we were doing something exciting. He's left a big hole in, if you like, the, the big expedition divers, certainly in the British diving industry. It always, always put other people in the team uh, above him and, uh, and worked hard to make sure that the job got done. There was the, the real, genuine will to stay with friends, dive with friends, professionals, do great adventures, and more of all, to be able to make dreams come true. Yeah, I mean, Carl's been with me on many, many um, diving trips, and, and he's, he's been the subject of uh, much of my photography. One of those pictures was the, uh, the famous ones of the audacious guns that I shot, it's been everywhere. I, I think Carl's legacy to the industry, if people continue to read about what he did, will still be a driving force, hopefully, for, for people to go out and do project work, that kind of stuff. And there was a picture of Carl with his scooter there, and we took that image and we use that in the logo of Eurotech. The best shows for us are our technical diving conferences and we've always backed um, the, the, the Eurotech concept. We need this type of show as, as, as technical divers and as divers in general really. You know, we need to put some excitement back into the industry. We need to see people doing these projects. We need to see new equipment developments all that kind of stuff. So you'll see Carl's there in the background of everything, whether it be headed letter paper or the big banner that you'll see across the hall. And Eurotech is really the only, Eurotech and Alstech are really the only platforms for this internationally to do it properly, I think, and do it well. Keep it going. Keep it going. The best thing. Or tonight, on the, on the screen at the top there, but Eurotech, he's there, even in the world.